There you go. Take it away. Can I just ask, I just go through that. <coughs> Not very technical. <laughs> Okay, um, so thank you for letting me speak here today. I'm Emily Ann Nash. I work at the University of Brighton as uh, the Student Experience Development Advisor, um, but I am also a member of the Higher Education National um, Zone Committee, which creates um, part of my role is creating policy for the National Union of Students. So I've been pushing hard for um, technology in education and having that as a focal point for NUS. So I'm really pleased to be, talk to be able to talk to you today about the NUS Student Charter, which has just been developed. Um, so, here we go. <laughs> so, um, there are many challenges in the way of utilising technologies. Um, there's staff resistance, cost, and lack of leadership in driving the agenda, just to name a few. But now it's not just us in this room who are striving to push this growing agenda. It's now the students in every institution throughout the UK who want better communication, they want access to resource with ease, and they want a 21st century student experience. It is those students <coughs> that with guidance can help us and be working with us to encourage the growth of this agenda. We need to be informing the decision makers on these technology developments and promote the value and benefits it brings to the institution and to our students. The investment in technology has never been as important in higher and further education as now. And understandably, the sector seems to be working at a slow pace in comparison to the commercial world in delivering to students' learning needs. The digital agenda has been growing due to new technologies and the expansion of technologies, as well as students' needs for constant, um, consistent, up-to-date information and the topic on everyone's lips at the moment, improving the student experience. We know technology is not the be-all and end-all, but we know it's a way of effectively driving quality up for students and putting students at the centre of that agenda. There are huge benefits that digital technologies can bring to the student experience, but in order to bring these technologies into the learning environment, commitment needs to be made by institutions and the students to drive the sector into the 21st century. The landscape of education is constantly changing. The demographics of students are transforming, and we will continue and will continue to do so all these students have different needs from their experience and we know that not one size fits all but through enabling user choice through technology users can use technology to build their own experience we are aware that the student experience has never been so prominent in the sector due to the government's education reforms I believe the student movement needs to ensure that students are at the centre of their education and their basic requirements are met so they're able to build on them and <coughs> succeed. But with that, ensuring that students are not treated as consumers of their education, but as co-producers. Co so giving them the tools to provide them with the opportunity to explore their own, own independent learning. I believe that by providing students with clear, up-to-date information and enabling them to engage with their education experience, institutions can encourage and enable independent learning through the co-production model by the use of te digital technologies. To do this, NUS think that institutions need to put more investment into their technology from their internal communication systems to bring digital, digital technologies into the learning environment. So, the NUS has, um, sorry, I'm trying to think where my microphone is, sorry. <laughs> the NUS has been conducting some research um, amongst students to look at their perspectives, demands and training needs, and this is some of their findings from the recent student experience report in 2010. This is an example of one of the research projects which has been published over the last few years, and there is a noticeable difference in expectations, I think, from three years ago to now. I believe it's actually quite hard for students to, on the ground, have a real understanding of the benefits of technology, so perhaps may not promote it. Students complain, as you can see here on the right side, <laughs> um, students do complain a lot about the organisation of their courses, their timetabling, the virtual learning environment, um, access to resources, communication, but the emphasis should not be placed on them to come up with the solutions, but working with them so they, you can, they can guide you to meet their needs of their day-to-day -day life experience, as James Clay was saying earlier. So, 
We created a student charter. We at NUS have been working with various partners such as JISC and here and together we have drawn together what we think are the key elements which affects the staff and student experience and how institutions can commit to working with their student unions to push this agenda forward. Together we have created the Student Technology Charter and today I'm going to introduce you to it. This charter has for the first time joined up the student voice in regards to technology. So first number one point on the student charter. All institutions should have an ICT strategy that is regularly revised. Enhancing learning, teaching and assessment through the use of technology is one of a number of ways in which institutions can address their strategic missions. Institutions need to move beyond pockets of innovative practice to adopt an institution-wide approach and consider ways that technology can improve both the staff and the student experience. It's important that students are key strategic partners in this formulation of the strategy and that the students' union is involved in forming these strategies. Institutions should invest in staff development and give recognition to effective use of technology and learning. Support should be given to help teaching staff develop technology-enhanced learning and innovation should be recognised, celebrated and shared. The effective use of technologies should become embedded into the ethos of the institution and the practice of its staff. Training must be holistic and practical <coughs> to ensure that both students and staff utilise the full potentials of digital technologies. Students should be offered needs analysis of their capability at the start of their programme, so when they're first coming into university, look at what their needs are, <laughs> identify their requirements, and staff should be offered regular training and development on how to make the most effective use of, their, of technology with their students. All training should be properly accredited, and support for staff should include training in both pedagogical and technical, technical use. It is imperative that institutions ensure that any technology used is made accessible to all. This includes the entire diverse student population, including part-time students, placement students, international students, distance learners and learners with disabilities. Additionally, IT infrastructure needs to be sufficient for the demands placed on it and made available to all. And I know that we've touched on that this afternoon as well. Institutions need to initiate a more responsive process of curriculum design and delivery as technology can improve, um, can provide the efficiencies and flexibility they need. However, technology should be applied to enhance the teaching and learning experience and the methods should be fully appropriate to the course of study. And that's going back on the whole one size fits all, it doesn't, one size doesn't fit all. The focus should be on learning design and with the assistance of technology, supporting learning with technology. Administration. The use of technology in institutional administration will simplify and improve assessment, feedback, registration and module selection. Technology should also be utilised to support effective communications within institutions for both students and staff. Institutions should understand and highlight the link between technology enhanced learning and employability. Embedding the acquisition of digital literacy in the cu curriculum is essential as students face an increasingly competitive job market. Technology should also be used to work with personal tutors to track and archive personal development. Now this is a particular area that I think is a great concern. I've been, I, I don't know how to use technology that well, but I know a lot better than most people in my courses how to use technology. You know, I use a bit of Twitter and I use a bit of blogging, but actually my knowledge of, wind, my knowledge of you know, going onto Excel or going onto Windows is exactly the same as it was before I even came to university, and that's true of many students. The other day, when I was trying to put this presentation together, my computer was just not working in my office, so I thought, okay, who can I go to? I'll go to marketing. Marketing's a good department. They've got lots of 
good computers and things. So I went over and I said, hi, can I use your computer, please? Mm. They're like, yep, sure. So went in, sat at the computer, and this is like the biggest computer screen I've ever seen. It's bigger than my telly. And um, sat in front of it. And they said, okay, then Emily, you're an IT techie person. You can work it out. Walked off, slept for two hours trying to work out PowerPoint on the Mac. And I just thought to myself, this is why this is so important. You know, people, uh, students going into industry should know at least a very basic minimum of different operating systems. And at university, we have the opportunity to be doing that for students. So I think it is really important that not only students, students do have these skills, but employers are also expecting these skills as well. So next point, there's not many more left, so I'll just keep going. Um, appropriate IT infrastructure needs to be in place in order to maximise the potential of digital technologies in higher education. Investment in this infrastructure should be a priority for institutions to meet student expectation and demand, including Wi-Fi, appropriate learning spaces and access to computers. And I think this is going back to some other points that we were saying. It's so annoying as a student when you're walking into university <coughs> and you want to just have a space where you can chill out with your fellow students and do a bit of coursework, and you can't even find a plug, you can't find Wi-Fi, it's so frustrating. And so it means that you can't have those conversations, you can't do those, that work that you've set out to do because there's nowhere appropriate to be able to do so. So the universities or institutions should be thinking about this when they're looking at their estates plan or they should be looking at it when they're doing their plan for Wi-Fi at takeover and stuff. Okay, consultation with students will ensure that institutions are fully aware of demand and perception. Wider research will also ensure that expectations of future students can be understood and responded to. The institution should seek the advice and support of its student union in conducting this research. We should be look I think that we should be looking ahead and not currently or behind, we should be looking to the future of what we want because we know how long it takes for things to get through institutions. It takes ages and by the time you get it there, it's too little, too late. And finally, on the charter, digital technology should enhance learning, teaching and learning but not be used as a replacement for, to existing effective practice. Technology should be used to enhance teaching and learning, not to act as a replacement to quality teaching. Retaining face-to-face -face contact time between academic staff and the student, as well as peer-to-peer -peer interaction, is fundamental to providing a holistic student experience. Digital technologies should be used to enhance higher education with a blended teaching approach being adopted. So there was our charter. And I know what many of you are thinking, this girl is telling us what we already know. I know that, but... I suppose the message for me here today is you've been saying it for years and years and years and the student movement have woken up and we are also now saying it. We want to be partners with you in delivering this. I would strongly suggest you go back and talk to your student unions. I didn't know anything about technology, really. I mean, I've always had a bit of an interest in it, but it was from talking, I was just having a random conversation with a member of information services complaining about feedback or something like that. And they said, there is another way. And that's what started it for me. And I was thinking, you know, I, you, you take NSS, and I think that technology can creatively really, really can address so many of the different areas of NSS, such as organisation and management, such as assessment and feedback, such as teaching. And if your SU officers or student reps may not be, oh, yes, I see technology, let's, let's talk about it. But if you talk to them about the problems, that is the issues that students do have on the ground, such as management and organisation, not getting their timetables on time, not being a, having their rooms swapped around a lot, then you could just have an open conversation with them and just see where your priorities match, because I can guarantee they probably do. Um, I think that the um, academic vice president is a good one to start with, to be honest. I would always start with that. Um, if you have those officers on board, you can take this charter further. Maybe even develop your own charter, because I see some imperfections in that one, like the ICT strategy. I think that it needs to be a bit more than just an ICT strategy. It should be embedded in every strategy in, the univers in my university, I think. Um, but I'm sure many of you agree with me, even implementing one or two of these points will make a huge difference and a step towards the future. 
so that's my message today and um, thank you very much for listening. Yeah.